David Pluff, let me start with you. I, I, I want to, this is from our most recent NBC poll, and we asked folks, what's the most important issue to you in this election? And if you combine the economy and inflation, basically one third of voters say, that's the most important thing, the economy or inflation. And among those voters, you're looking at it on the screen right now, 60% of them say they are voting Republican. 31% of them say they're voting Democrat. A 29-point advantage there for Republicans on the most important topic, what voters say is the most important topic. Um, as a Democrat, how do you overcome a headwind like that? Well, Steve, first I would put out that chart you point, put up is very important. It's, it's, it's always important to remind people the last four off-year elections were all wave elections. Historically, we've never seen anything like that. Uh, what we're seeing right now, and it is still a long, you know, 25 days, things could change, but it uh, doesn't add up to that. I think we're going to have a lot of close races, Senate, House, Governor. So if you're running a campaign, you, you can't ignore the economy if you're a Democrat. If you're an incumbent, you talk about the things you've done that are popular in your district or state. And you also have to disqualify the Republican candidate and saying, listen, they're not going to do anything to fix the economy. They're going to shower the rich with tax cuts uh, and, and not, you know, look after working people. But then you have to bring these other issues into the races where you have an advantage abortion, health care, uh, democracy. And I think that's what you have. You have obviously a tough economy as voters see it. You've got a president in power, historically know that what's happened, powerful force. But the opposing power force is post Dobbs, democracy. The Republican brand uh, is not particularly strong. Trump is still hanging around. So that's what I think all adds up to a bunch of closed races. One caveat is when you show the congressional ballot, Yes, it's only 0.9, but there's still about 9% of the people who aren't professing a decision. And so how that group breaks is going to be super important. And like in 14, we saw a lot of them broke Republican. So if you're Democrat, I think you have to watch that carefully. Like who's left out there? Because ultimately, 100% of the vote gets allocated. Uh, Rich, let me turn the, uh, the same question around on you a bit. With an advantage like that on the economy and inflation, when you look at a generic ballot that is still within one point in favor of Republicans this close to the election, are they missing an opportunity? Is something going wrong for them here? Well, I think Democrats have achieved some separation from Biden and the standing of the Republican Party isn't particularly robust. That said, but the most important issue far and away being the economy and inflation, Republicans being heavily favored on that issue it's hard to see that that fundamental is not going to be driving uh, what happens about a, a month from now. And Republicans, clearly, they lost ground in the summer and the reaction over Dobbs. They feel, though, that the fundamentals are reasserting themselves in this race. And they, they don't need you know, a big 1994-2014 wave election. They just need a, a standard midterm. They'll easily win the House in that circumstance, and, and they will, will win the House, just a question of, of the margin. And they only need, you know, a, a seat in the Senate. So it's not a particularly heavy lift for uh, swing races that people are focused on in the Senate. And easily, you know, Republicans are going to win 50 or 52 Senate seats. Now, obviously, there's a big difference between 50 or 51, <laughs> but uh, Pennsylvania's tightened. Ron Johnson, the incumbent in Wisconsin, is now looking good. Uh, Herschel Walker, I think that race hasn't really changed much, um, and he might have helped himself tonight. And Nevada is looking very good for Adam Lack Laxalt, the Republican. So it's it's easy to see how they could pick up, get to 52 in the Senate. You know, let's let's talk a little bit more, David, uh, about the Senate. I know we've got Georgia on our minds tonight with that debate, but uh, Rich mentioned Pennsylvania. Um, I think we have here the, the current polling average in that Pennsylvania Senate race between John Fetterman uh, and Mehmet Oz. If we don't, I can tell you the current polling average. There you go. You can see it's a little small print there, but Fetterman leads in the average by 3.4 points right now over Oz. If you go back to August, it was an 8.7 point advantage for Fetterman. The, the, the Pennsylvania race is interesting because it's the only one currently that's a Republican seat where the Democrats lead the polling average. So on paper, this is the best opportunity for Democrats, but it is tightening. Uh, what do you attribute it to? And, and are you as a Democrat nervous about Pennsylvania right now? Well, you're never super comfortable, yeah, Steve, as you know, in, in Pennsylvania, uh, with, the abs with the exception maybe of our race in 08. Uh, you know, it, it's always going to be competitive. So first of all, your point about it is a Republican open seat. Uh, so if the Democrats were to win that in terms of the chess match, that's the Senate, 
that increases the degree of difficulty for Republicans who are critical. I think the reason it's tightened up largely isn't because a bunch of suburban vote is moving to Oz. I think Republicans have come home to him, um, Republican-leaning independents. Um, but you got to remember, one, you know, long way out, but Josh Shapiro looks like he's in very strong position. So you're going to have a top of the ticket there winning probably several points above 50 percent or certainly over 50 percent. And that's a helpful dynamic uh, for Fetterman. Um, so there's no doubt. So I think most of the gains have been Oz, uh, you know, basically getting vote he was probably going to get anyway. It's, it's coming to his column. But sure, that sounds like a race that's going to come down to at most four points, could be two points, could be a point. Um, and so things like turnout in Philadelphia and in Pittsburgh, do you get the suburban margins that Biden got, that Josh Shapiro is going to get? Super important. But Pennsylvania is key just because that is the Democrats' best opportunity. I still think Wisconsin is going to be close, but, but Pennsylvania is the best opportunity for the Democrats to steal a seat. Uh, and when things are this close, just again, in terms of that chess match, it's incredibly important. Uh, Rich, in our last segment, we were talking about that Georgia race, and Charles Bullock from the uh, University of Georgia was talking about that Kemp Warnock voter in Georgia, basically saying, you know, hey, look, Trump is playing a role in that, that, you know, Kemp was at political war with Donald Trump, and that maybe appealed to a voter in Georgia, a suburban voter who doesn't really like Biden, isn't nuts about the Democrats, but also really doesn't like Donald Trump, and is comfortable with Kemp but not sold on Walker. And I, I think that dynamic could present itself in a number of suburban areas around the country, potentially, that Republicans are counting on. Is Donald Trump a hindrance right now? His prominence, unusual for a former president. Is he a hindrance to Republican yeah. efforts? Yeah, no, no, absolutely is. But, I, you know, he's not the most important issue in the election. And Georgia is going to be very interesting because that, that Kemp margin is really going to matter. It seems like he's likely to beat Stacey Abrams. 52, you know, um, would be a big victory. But if he gets a 53, 54, then you can see him potentially pulling Herschel Walker over the top and over 50 percent and avoiding a runoff. But I, I don't think they're going to be Kemp Warnock voters. I think there's going to be a fall off, fall off in the Kemp vote, obviously. So there'll be a Kemp undervote, maybe Kemp, the libertarian candidate. But I, I don't think many people are going to be pulling the lever both for Brian Kemp and, and Raphael Warnock. And by the way, Governor Kemp has proven himself one of the most impressive Republican politicians in the country.